All right. Hi, everyone. I'm, uh, first of all, sorry about the delay. Uh, sorry to the FOSTEM organizers for uh, making them look bad. It's all my fault, so, you know. Uh, uh, I, I'm also happy that I have a pretty short talk right now because I think we'll still manage on time. And if not, we'll run a little bit over maybe with questions if people have any. So yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Eric. I work at Collabora. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, what's happened in the last year of the Zinc project. Uh, so yeah, let's, I'll just start. So one year ago, uh, I was here at... Uh, them and I presented about uh, Zinc. And for those who don't know the Zinc project, it's an OpenGL implementation on top of Vulkan using uh, Mesa 3D and uh, the Gallium interface. Uh, what we had was running OpenGL 3.0, or at least exposed that. Uh, turns out after some more test running and stuff, we were kind of far off on, on a bunch of the details. Uh, so, uh, yeah. We were failing a whole lot of piglet tests, and I don't have the numbers, but it, was, it wasn't great, but it was kind of you know, working for some applications. Uh, yeah. So uh, this fall, uh, Zinc got upstreamed in Mesa and, and uh, became a part of uh, Mesa 19.3. So it's no longer uh, living in a branch. It's, uh, it's now shipping. It's not compiling by default, but you can enable it the same way as, an, as you enable any uh, Gallium drivers. And uh, we've started getting some uh, contributions from other people. So now we're, I think five people have contributed to Zinc. Uh, I think last year there was two. So this is interesting. Uh, and yeah. And now everything happens upstream in the, in the upstream issue tracker and uh, stuff like that. So no point in filing issues in my, in my fork any longer. Uh, we've uh, sadly had to revert uh, away from the OpenGL 3.0 stuff. So we're now only exposing OpenGL 2.1. Uh, there's two major features missing uh, that were in the la last prototype that need some re-engineering. Uh, yeah. So... Since last year, we've added some, I think, uh, pretty like uh, some features that are quite nice. We we now properly support control flow in the in the shaders, so you can do all of your ifs and switches and uh, loops and stuff like that. Uh, we properly forward uh, point sizes if uh, if they're not written from the vertex shader. We yeah do alpha testing uh, and. Uh, Uh, transfer, uh, transform feedback and conditional rendering support because we uh, yeah, re-engineered some of the way things are emitted and some, yeah, how curious way worked because, yeah, the old thing kind of failed in a lot of cases. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, currently uh, doing a, quite more structured testing uh, than before. So this these numbers are actually a little bit out of date. They were up to date three days ago, but now I've improved some stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we have about three, 3,000 something tests passing. Uh, uh, I think we're down to almost half of the failures now. Uh, yeah, and uh, even less crashes. So that's, yeah, probably closer to 80% pass rate right now. Um, and uh, most of the failures right now, or uh, at least a big bulk of them, has to do with unsupported edge flags, uh, which we need to do something more clever about. Uh, right now, we just fail, <laughs> throw an error, and uh, give up. Uh, yeah, and also some stuff due to unsupported line stipple. Line stipple, we have an easy way forward with because there's uh, there's uh, an extension for better lines in Vulkan now that is exposed by, I think, both the ANV and RADV drivers that uh, allow, allow us to forward line stippling. Last time, I, like I tried, uh, I have some experimental patches for it. 
they, there seems to be some differences in how, how this works uh, in, in Vulkan and OpenGL, so it didn't really pass a whole lot of tests. It's, it started stippling, but there's some more stuff to it. Um, yeah, performance is something I keep getting asked about. I keep uh, trying to avoid the, uh, the question a bit. Um, it's not great, uh, and it's all, but it's also not really the main focus of the project. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't care about performance, but this uh, zinc is kind of like trying. I'm trying to prepare us for a future where we don't need OpenGL anymore. So uh, hopefully, machines will like. I, I don't think this is going to be super relevant for the next five years, and uh, uh, and then machines will be a little bit faster and and. Uh, uh, OpenGL, like more high-end stuff will be ported, and uh, I think we will uh, not care that much. But, uh, but of course, uh, it's nice to get the performance we can. Um, yeah, so not much has changed there. I don't really do any systematic numbers here, but Pharonix did a benchmarking uh, of RADV, or Zinc on top of RADV versus Radi Radium SI. And I'm kind of surprised by the results. Some of the tests are almost on par. I'm guessing those are cases where uh, we're GPU bound and for some reason we happen to do things that are okay for the GPU. Uh, but uh, some are pretty far off and then we're talking about maybe 25 to 33%-ish of the performance. So still usable, but not, not uh, anything you wanna game on, for instance. Um, so yeah, and uh, just from how Zinc is engineered, I think there's quite a lot that can be done for uh, for performance. We're doing a very simple kind of translation model where we're not trying to be terribly clever. And uh, yeah, I think at some point we're probably gonna have to start being a bit more clever. Uh, yeah, so some about the stuff I'm working on. Um, Next on my kind of uh, to-do list here is uh, crossing off OpenGL 3.0 again. Um, yeah, um, these slides are out of date because, uh, or this already, because I added back instance uh, rendering and texture buffer objects over the weekend. Or not over the weekend, but the last couple of days. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the conditional rendering and the transforms feedback stuff uh, needs some more work. I also want to start testing for uh, OpenGL AS 2.0. Uh, I suspect that we're already there, but uh, in terms of uh, features, probably fail some tests and some bugs there, but, uh, but I think we should have all of the stuff that's required. But I haven't spent any time on it, uh, but uh, I think after I've land landed GL 3.0, I think this might be what I will look into next. Uh, yeah, and then it's the cool, like this is moving kind of slowly currently because I'm working on Zinc uh, as a part-time R&D project uh, at work. And I'm kind of uh, super busy with some other uh, paid client work at the time. Um, so I, I kind of, don't have a great way out of that. It's there's not gonna. This is gonna be the case for uh, for some months going forward. Uh, but if you need Zinc to move faster, I think there's kind of two options. You can either work on it yourself, or you could hire Collabora to work on it for you. Uh, yeah, well, I think we're at the point where uh, I think to move this faster and and uh, more robustly, we need to find a find some paying customers or something to to spend some proper time on it. All right, that was my talk. <laughs> so I managed, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, one minute over. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have many questions, actually. Yeah. Uh, one of the main criticism against the OpenGL API is how bloated it got over the years. So I'm curious, what is your mid to long term goal? Like, do you aim to support all versions of OpenGL or only like the modern ones? Or? I. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, so the question was if, uh, if uh, I plan on supporting only uh, old or new OpenGL versions or like what the long-term plan for Zinc is. And 
the long-term plan, from my perspective, this is going to take a while, but it's, it is full OpenGL support all the way, uh, as much as we can. I don't care too much about uh, hypothetical Vulkan drivers, for instance, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to kind of use uh, extensions uh, where that gets me out of a, out of a problem. Um, but uh, but I, I don't see anything in the way for, for instance, if someone has a has a driver and they won't hire OpenGL person, we might have to implement some lowering to some nasty stuff. I, I for instance, foresee quite a lot of uh, uh, fixed function stuff being lowered to uh, geometry <coughs> shader stuff uh, in the future for, for instance, uh, stuff like the edge flags. So, uh, yeah, uh, long-term goal. I think I, I don't see a reason why not to go for the for full uh, OpenGL 4.6 compatibility profile, but um, it's going to take a while. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. Um, okay, so two topics at the same time, like the thing of how much work it is and how like you would like to be hired to to work or to work on it. Um, is this like Linux only or is it uh, usable on other platforms? Like one platform I can think of uh, would be the Mac where the OpenGL support has been completely dropped and something like that could actually help uh, developers, even like uh, corporate developers to to save quite some work. Okay, so the question was uh, about uh, platform support and uh, if it's Linux only or if it works on other platforms as well. Um, it works on Linux uh, and on Mac OS. So I have not, uh, I don't have a Mac, I don't test on Mac, but we have users who use it on top of Molten VK, on top of Metal, <laughs> uh, to, to run on Mac. Uh, so, so there are people who do this, um, and there's some, yeah, there, there's some interesting people trying this uh, for some kind of big projects. Um, I don't think anyone is doing this in production, but uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, so right now, uh, the implementation is kind of tied to uh, to Mesa and the uh, Windows system implementations there, uh, and Mesa doesn't, uh, to my knowledge, have any. Windows uh, WinSys integration of, apart from the software uh, rasterizer stuff. Uh, Zinc has the ability to hook in as a software rasterizer, basically as a mem copy into, into a frame buffer. And I guess in theory that could be wired up, uh, but I think it's gonna be pretty terrible for performance reasons. So I, I kind of, I'm not planning on uh, going down, down that road. Right, so the question is if there's any I don't th see a reason why we can't add extensions, uh, especially not uh, I'm primarily targeting the Intel AMV driver because that's the hardware I have. Uh, and that driver happens to live in the same tree, which is super convenient. So uh, at some point I might look into that. I'm more, uh, I'm more interested in this for uh, compatibility than for, for features though. Because there's some things that are just a little bit too crazy to implement without, um, without any extensions. But I think the answer is yes, we could go down, down that road. We're not actively pursuing it yet. Uh, this could very well change, for instance, if we get a paying customer who does care about performance. I think uh, yeah. that's probably a likely outcome at some point that we get some benchmark results or, or goals that we need to reach. All right. Um, how hard do you think uh, it would be?
things. Um, it could be useful for some compatibility stuff there. API translates more or less directly to the Vulkan API. And I think to answer that question kind of truthfully will be kind of a long answer because uh, it, it, uh, we're, we're not implementing OpenGL, we're implementing the Gallium interface. The Gallium interface is much closer to something like Dark 3D10. Um, we're, we're, we're taking a pretty naive approach where we're kind of like uh, just pulling the handbrake whenever uh, semantics break if we if we don't so uh, right now we're going pretty directly I would say uh, we're doing stuff like uh, for instance uh, Vulcan has the concept of render passes uh, and we're just starting and stopping them whenever we can't uh, whenever commands aren't allowed inside a render pass so we're not trying to reorder uh, things in track dependencies for instance um, that's is a horrible idea, and that's definitely going to have to change. But uh, but uh, for now, it works much better than I feared. I think one of the reasons for that is probably that I'm currently targeting uh, desktop GPUs largely, and they don't really benefit for, from uh, render process as much as uh, tile-based renderers do. So yeah. Uh, how do you deal with shaders? Shaders. Uh, yeah, so the question is how do I deal with shaders? And uh, this is, a, uh, this is, I think, is the one of the more interesting parts of Zinc, uh, at least for me. Uh, so we take, uh, we take uh, shaders. Uh, from Mesa, we get shaders. OK, I, I have to wrap up soon. Uh, we get shaders from uh, SGLSL or ARB vertex program. They get converted uh, into some IR and then into NUR, which is uh, a um, general IR for, uh, in Mesa, and NUR gets translated finally to SPUR-V, which gets handed uh, over uh, to the... So, so basically, I think what I wanted to ask is, uh, do you translate it to spur -V and then the Vulkan driver translates it back to NUR again? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> could, could that be avoided? Uh, probably. Uh, so, the, so, so the, yeah, the question is if, if going from NUR to SPUR-V and back again could be avoided. Um, because the, the driver, the Vulkan driver will, if it's, if it's a Mesa-based Vulkan driver, will translate back to NUR. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a dance there. Uh, yes, I think that could be avoided. Uh, this, I think, is an interesting point to look into uh, making an extension. That being said, NUR isn't really made for, uh, uh, for serializing in a, in a there is there is a NER serialization uh, level, but it needs to it needs to serialize to the exact same version. So you can't have because uh, NER NER changes over time. Uh, so you would have to either guarantee that the drivers are built from the exact same tree. Um, I, I think it would be possible to negotiate the like NER and the Mesa SHA version and try to avoid it in, the, in that case. And uh, yeah, I think that would be interesting. It would maybe save us some time. I haven't seen any profiling data indicating that uh, currently shader compilation is a problem, but uh, I'm guessing that might become a problem uh, once we fix some of the other worst problems. All right, time is up, so thank you all for all the questions. Thank you.